Uh, they had the director who's done the Harry Potter films was signed up to do this one. But uh, so long has time pass, has passed now that I'm not sure he's still going to be available. So I don't know the answer to that. It's been on the stage, and it's been on the stage in Florida, down in Sarasota quite recently, uh, a stage adaptation, which I did not write, but I've seen it. It's quite good. So who else has something they want? Yes. What's my favorite book that I've written is one that very few people know about. Uh, and if you ask me on a different day, I might come up with a different answer. But currently, my favorite is one called The Silent Boy. It has a beautiful cover, I think. Uh, and they've used the same cover on the paperback edition as the hardcover. I had a, a great aunt, my grandmother's sister, who at the turn of the century graduated from college, say 1906 or so. And instead of getting married the way her sisters did and the way my grandmother did, she went to New York and studied to be a photographer. And at that time, that was very unusual for a woman. And uh, when she died, by then I had studied photography and had worked as a photographer. She left me her old photographs. And unfortunately, she didn't leave me any information about them. And the one that most haunted me was of a boy. And I know nothing about the history of that photograph, but it sat on my desk for quite a long time. A boy wearing farm boy clothes, overalls, and, he, and he, he, he's got a hat, and he looks as though something is wrong. And so for a long time, I looked at that photograph and tried to think what his story might be. Uh, he looks as though he's done something terrible and he didn't mean to. And that's the story of that, that book. And so I decided, looking at the photograph also, that he, and also he told me his name, uh, he, he it, I perceived that he can't speak, that he doesn't speak. And so somebody else has to tell his story. And so I decided his story would be told by a young girl and I illustrated the books with real old photographs. And the young girl photographs are my mother as a child, because my mother was born in 1906, and so they're appropriate. And then it becomes this kind of story, uh, what writers call the unreliable narrator, because a very young child is telling this set of events that she doesn't understand. The reader will understand them. Certainly the writer understood it, but the child telling the story doesn't understand it. So it was. It was interesting to write, and it remains one of my favorite of my books. OK, somebody else had a hand up. Yes. She said she saw the stage adaptation of The Giver in Philadelphia. I didn't see it in Philadelphia, but it has been in many cities. Uh, I was not involved at all in that adaptation, but I had to give my permission for him to do it. More recently, I have adapted one of my own books to the stage, uh, the book Gossamer. And I loved that process. It's very different from writing a book. And it's been performed in Milwaukee and in uh, uh, Portland, Oregon, and it will be performed this fall in Philadelphia uh, and maybe go on from there. Uh, but uh, it's fun for somebody my age who's done what, I've, what I do for so long to turn my attention to a different related writing still, but very different genre. Uh, I keep wishing they'd ask me to try to write the screenplay for The Giver, but uh, Hollywood is dealing with too much money. They can't take on somebody who's never done it before and says, please, sir, may I try? Uh, so they won't. But, uh, but I was very fortunate that a theater director commissioned me to adapt the book Gossamer to the stage, and it's been quite a successful play. Anybody else? Yes. I heard the beginning of your question. When an author writes a book and the book is sold to the movies, and what? Oh, OK. Uh, does the author retain the right to approve the script? Uh, perhaps some authors with more clout than I. Perhaps Stephen King does. But I don't. And yet I feel very fortunate that the Warner Brothers, which is the company working on The Giver, has brought me out to, I want to say Hollywood. But 
Los Angeles, wherever their offices are, to meet with the screenwriter, and they've they've solicited my opinion about various things. But I don't have any rights, really. It's just a courtesy that they've done that. And in fact, Number of the Stars, another book of mine, is currently being made into a film. And there was an interview that I just read yesterday with Sean Astin, the actor, who is producing the film of Number of the Stars. And in the interview, I've had nothing to do with that film at all, except to say, OK, I gave him permission, and he had to pay me something for that. Uh, but in the interview, he makes several misstatements of fact having to do with the book. And I thought, oh, do I know how to get in touch with him and correct him? And then I had to say, no, Lois, you can't do that. They, uh, they do what they do, and it's not your business anymore. So you just have to sit back and, and hope they do a good job. Yeah? Uh huh. Uh, she refers to a book of mine for younger kids called All About Sam, and there are, I think, three that follow it, uh, creating a series about that little boy. And that little boy is a spin off from the Anastasia books. That's Sam's older sister. Uh, and she asks whether Sam is based on my own younger brother, and perhaps to a certain degree, plus the fact that I had two sons and I now have three grandsons. So there's no shortage of little boys doing uh, interesting things that I can put in a book. Uh, although, as I recall, Sam flushes his sister's goldfish down a toilet. None of my children ever did that, nor did my brother. <laughs> but those books are fun. OK, uh, our time is almost up. And I will be down the road here at a different tent signing your books and answering your questions in person if you have additional questions you'd like to ask. Thank you.